no sensory experience of the body lying horizontally in bed. It's really weird. So you know you've got a body lying horizontally in bed only by inference. And it's very weird to have to infer the presence of your own body. But you do. The only body you, you experience directly is your body walking around in the dream, but that body is purely a mental body that you're experiencing only by way of mental perception, but not by tactile. So all your experiences in the dream are purely mental. right? And so there's introspection focusing just on the mental, introspection just focusing just on the, the somatic, and then there's introspection looking at the interface between the somatic and the, the purely mental. Okay? Can I just ask you a question in connection with that? Sure. I mean, it does seem even in dreams, for instance, if you're very hot when you're sleeping, you yes. not be aware of your heart, but you're more likely to dream of fire. Or That's very true. You know, something like that. So connection does exist. You're not aware of it. Well, no, no question about it. Oh, it's a fascinating topic. If you want to hang out for another hour, we can <laughs> really go into that. I'll tell you just one fun anecdote, because I, this is an area I've worked in a lot with Stephen LeBerge and worked a lot in dream yoga. I've taught it a lot and so forth. It's a fascinating area. And it's not just for fun and games. When in dream yoga, in this practice, it's really a Vipassana practice for gaining insight into dream reality, because dream reality is not non-reality. It's dream reality, right? Um, Stephen LeBerge, if you want, just one just fun story, and then we'll call it a night. Is that okay? I know it's a bit late, but you have vacation tomorrow. You gave me the excuse. Um, Stephen LeBerge has, has uh, devised something. He's created something called a Nova Dreamer. A Nova Dreamer. I have one. He's coming out with a new model. They always have to come out with new models. But I have an old model. It's a set of goggles you put over your eyes. And it's, got, it's very sophisticated. It's very, and it's all, it's all linked up with your computer. It's all interfaced with the computer. It's got inside the goggle. It just feels like just a set of ordinary goggles like that. It's a mask, basically. It goes around your head. It's got on the inside of the goggle a detector that picks up rapid eye movement. And rapid eye movement, REM, is closely related to, not one-on-one, -on -one, but very close correlation with dreaming. So when you start dreaming, you're going to have this fluttering of the eyelids. Right? So he's got detectors there to pick up rapid eye movement. Well, you, you program this thing. There's all ways of programming it. So you program it so it doesn't even start being activated until about 90 minutes after you go to bed, or, or about 90 minutes after you think you're going to be asleep. Because you don't want it to be activated when you're just kind of moving your eyes while you're falling asleep. That's not dreaming it, you're just moving your eyes, right? And so you, let's you program it so it turns on, basically, let's say two hours after you go to bed, if you think it's going to take about a half an hour to get to sleep. It's about 90 minutes, 90 minutes, or you could program it for one hour, about 90 minutes after you fall asleep, you're, about, you're likely to have your first dream cycle. You'll have five to seven dream cycles per night. And so what this instrument does is that it picks up the rapid eye movement, and then it will send you a signal. Now you prepare yourself with prospective memory. You think, I put on these goggles, so tonight when I get this signal, that's going to be alert me to the fact that I'm dreaming. Now you can get two type, two type of signals, and you can intensify them, make them stronger, weaker. You can change the, change the variety. One is a visual stimulus. So it actually will flash a green or a red light on your eyelids, but that will make it through. You know, close your eyes right now and fly, f f um, flash a bright light on it, you pick up something. Well, even when you're dreaming, flash a bright light right on your eyelids, and it does get through, right? And so it can be a red light or a green light. You can make it very bright, very dim, fast or slow. You can do that, and or you can have it trigger a, an auditory, a beep, beep sound, right? And then again, if you, for the, both the flashing light or the beep beep, if you make it too, too high amplitude, it'll wake you up. Right? You just, what, 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 like that. If it's too soft, you don't even notice it. So you have to find, OK, I want the light to be bright enough that I pick it up, but not so bright I wake up. I want the sound to be loud enough that I hear it, but not so that it jolts me awake. Right? Now, the, the version I have, it comes with a microphone. And so you can record into it. And this is what I recorded, Alan. You're dreaming. <laughs> right now you're dreaming. Alan, recognize this is a dream. You make the recording, and then you're, so lo and behold, then you, you put on the mask, start having a rapid eye movement, and you're in the midst of a dream now, and suddenly you hear this voice, a very familiar voice, saying, <laughs> Alan, you're dreaming. You go, who said that? <laughs> oh, it's me. I'm dreaming. You know, that's the whole idea, that it gives you a cue a cue that you are dreaming. So it can be your own voice, right? Or it can be a beep, beep. So, and so, so you prime yourself. Tonight, if I hear a beep, beep, 
that's going to be my cure, or if I see a red light flashing. Well, here's, so all of this is a prelude to the punchline. It's not a joke. This is true. Uh, so you're dreaming, let's say you're dreaming that you're just driving around downtown Singapore, and you, and you come to a stoplight, and then you hear beep, 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 beep. Now, I don't know what your garbage trucks are like in Singapore, but in America, <laughs> when the garbage truck backs up, it goes beep, 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 and we all know that. In America, we always know the garbage trucks make a special sound. It, eh, 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 and they're backing up, right? And so what will happen in the dream, one of the things that may happen is you're downtown Singapore, if you have that kind of garbage truck, and you lo, lo and behold, you look, and there is a garbage truck <laughs> making just the kind of beep, beep sound, but the beep, beep is coming from your goggles, right? And so somehow it's, in, it's infiltrating itself into the dream, and then your imagination conjures up something to make that be sensible, to fit into the dream. Now, for the red light, what, what can happen here is you're driving, right, let's say you're just driving in Singapore, and then you suddenly look up at the sky and you say, that's interesting, there's lightning, but it's red lightning. <laughs> right? And that's the red light making itself into and being interpreted, subconsciously interpreted into the dream, so it becomes part of that. So you prime yourself. If I see red lightning, if I see red flashing light of any kind, that's going to be my cue. If I hear a beep, beep, beep of a garbage truck or anything else, that's going to be my cue. And likewise, if I, see a, if I hear a voice from the heavens saying, Alan, you're dreaming, <laughs> that's going to be my cue. Like, duh. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you should really get that one. So, but it's very interesting how these things filter into the dream and then become incorporated in the story or the dreamscape. Fascinating area. So Stephen LeBerge's book is the best one. Exploring the, he's had three books out. This is the best one. Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming. And on that note, I wish you sweet dreams. <laughs> Good night.